morning. This is the fourth Sunday after Epiphany, so welcome to our worship here at St. Luke's in Seaford, Delaware. Welcome to our friends uh, who worship with us on Facebook Live. We're glad you choose to be with our community for worship, and may God's blessing be upon us uh, as uh, the Holy Spirit comes to us today. And um, I'll, I'll turn it over to Peggy. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Good, morning. Good to see you all. Uh, just a reminder, we have Bible study uh, this Tuesday, 10 a.m. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a frog this morning. Uh, coffee hour next week with a home energy efficiency presentation. Uh, there are also other things coming up that are on your bulletin. Um, ECW uh, in February, Ash Wednesday is February 22nd at 4 o'clock, our service, and our annual meeting on February 26th. Does anyone have any other announcements? In that case, let's continue to worship. We'll begin with M646. <laughs> Strike two begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer, page one in our bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. <coughs> Let us pray the collect for the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany, the second prayer, the contemporary prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people. And in our great grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> the reading this morning is from Micah chapter 6. The scene is a court of law where God, as judge and accuser, charges Israel with contravening the Sinai Covenant and forgetting what it means to live in a way that holds God in awe. A reading from the book of Micah, here what the Spirit is saying to the church. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord and your, you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you, and what have I wearied you? Answer me, <clears throat> for I brought you up from the land of Egypt, and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam, son of Bor, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 15. We'll say it together. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right, who speaks the truth from his heart. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight, the wicked is rejected, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong, and does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. Paul has decried the division in the church at Corinth. Now he differentiates those from whom Christ's death, resurrection, and return to the Father are highly significant, and those who fail to understand Christ's sacrifice for us. This is a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Here the Spirit is saying to the church, a message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise 
and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and a foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who were called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Jesus Christ who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our secret hymn is one of the handouts, Freely, Freely. Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, 
for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I bring you good news in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Holy God. You have called us to follow you, to make you the center of our living and to live in you, to be bearers of your good news, the news that you have come to transform the world, to transform our lives, and to live in the kingdom you have prepared for us. Continue to strengthen us to live the life you call us to. Trusting in you and your goodness and your presence and blessedness. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so, um, every time we read the Beatitudes, I am reminded of one of my uh, parishioners in North Dakota who's um, grow, you know, grown and has children and grandchildren and so forth. But his family used to say that when he was little in Sunday school, when they were learning the Beatitudes, he came home from Sunday school one time and, and said, Ma, they were farmers, big farmers, you know, third, fourth generation farmers in North Dakota. And so when he came home, he said, uh, Mom, when I grow up, I want to be a meek. And uh, she said, why? And he said, well, because I want to inherit the earth, right? So every time I hear this, I think about my friend Doug Gullickson uh, in Cartwright, North Dakota. And uh, he, he continues to tend the land and till the land. And now uh, his children continue that generation as well. So Meeks. Anyway, so we have great readings for today. Micah is one of my favorite readings uh, for a number of reasons, but um, this is just such a great reminder of just, I mean, it's really that simple and yet that complicated, right? And so we have this great little, you have to imagine as uh, Peggy was uh, saying, you know, we have to imagine this to be a courtroom, right? courtroom where God is coming to remind the people of how far they've strayed away from him and in some ways asking them to make their case right and so his case is man these people become selfish they strayed they're not following the ways they have forgotten right they've forgotten who God is they've forgotten what God has done for them and and, it, and, um, and in forgetting, getting farther and farther away, right? And so, you know, this brings to mind the act of remembrance, right? I mean, we say, do this in remembrance of me with the Eucharist to bring Christ back to the center, right? To bring God back to the center. Remembering means coming back, bringing back, right? And so we have in this reading from Micah this, uh, uh, um, this question about, well, what is it that God requires of us, right? Is it the burnt offerings? Is it enough to just, I mean, and the burnt offerings and sacrifices were 
that's how you, you went to get forgiveness for your sins. It was part of your temple duty. It was part of your pilgrimage was to go and ask for forgiveness and remission for your sins. And so burnt offerings were a natural part of that rhythm of repentance, right? But, but is that enough? Do I have to offer my firstborn? Do I have to offer the first fruits, right? And all that stuff. And Jesus goes beyond that and says, never says, no, that's not important, right? For that time, following the, the, uh, uh, the rhythms of the Jewish traditions. He wasn't saying that at all. He was saying, but it's bigger than that. It's how you live. And do you live with your heart being the same kind of heart as God's heart, right? And so when he says, you know, God has already told us, right? And, and, and yet, you know, we're kind of like, we need a lot of V8s, right? Right? This, this thing all the time. Because God's already told us what's important in this life of living as not only Christ's disciples, but followers of God, followers of Jesus, right? God has already told us over and over again, right? And he's told us what is a blessed way to live. What is a way to live with God's heart? And what, is, what are the only things God requires, he said, to do justice, to love mercy, and walk humbly with God, to love kindness, to love mercy, right? Because those are all the things God's already given to us, right? And we're expected to sort of flow out from that, which is great from the hymn we just sang. Freely, freely he's given you, freely, freely give, right? And we do that because we remember, because we come back to this God of our salvation. And so this is like a courtroom reminding them of, boy, you, you, you know, this would have been an open and shut case, right, <laughs> on God's side, uh, right, that the people had fallen away. And what's the reminder? So come back to living the kind of life and the, and the road of living that God intends for us to live, right? All the readings today are about a way of life, right, a way of living. And it's a way of living that's contrasting the way of you know, the world, right? The way that the world tells us the things that are important and what makes you strong and what makes you successful and what makes you great, right? I love the line about, you know, God makes, you know, the foolishness of the world so obvious on the cross, right? And yet, it's, hard, it's a hard way to live. And so, so let's get into the Gospel of Matthew, which we will be into for a while now. You know, um, the Beatitudes means uh, blessings, you know, blessed are you, right? And we often think of the Beatitudes as only being these 12. But just a trivia for you to win a pizza next time you go play trivia is that, you know, there are Beatitudes, blessed are the those who, right? And we see them in the Psalms. There's like 40 in the Old Testament and really like 44 in the New Testament. And, and here's the best trivia, Mark has none. And it's not that he was depressed, right? He just never has the, you know, never has blessed are you when. And it's not just these 12 verses, right? It's not just these 12 verses. And what's important when we read scripture again is to go to context, right? So what is the context, the social, political, economic, uh, religious context in which Matthew is writing? So if he's writing towards the end of the first century, the temple's been destroyed, uh, the Roman uh, Empire has a big thumb on the uh, oppressive systems on the people, you know, they rob people with taxes, they, 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 you know, it's, a, it's really a terrible regime, right? And the, and the, and the uh, uh, early Christians are living under that. And Matthew's writing to this community to say, right, now you hear the words, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn differently, right? When you think about the context, um, about the elitism even of the religious system. 
He's also speaking to this group of, of uh, Christians in this community who have been kicked, you know, many of them kicked out of the synagogue for being followers of Jesus, right? Kick, kicked out of their home church. And that's where they grew up and learned everything they know about faith, kicked out because now they're followers of Jesus. So they're kicked out of the synagogue. A lot of them have had rifts with family members for following Jesus. A lot of them are persecuted for following Jesus. Right? And so it's within that context that Matthew is writing to the people. Right? And some of those aspects mean oppressive systems are part of our world. Hmm. Listen to the news for five minutes. They're part of our systems, right? In our country, they're part of systems in the world, right? They're, they're, they're things that that, that we live with great grief and mourning about how the world is, the divisiveness, the, the, uh, the you know, all, all of the corruptive things, all of the, you know, a lot of times people are so negative, like, oh, the world's going to hell in a handbag. Oh, you know, I hear it a lot. And it's like, yeah, but we believe in God and this God who is present in all of that. And we're not the first group of people who's ever gone through anything hard. Most of you in this room have gone through lots of difficult times with world things, right? Or with our country, right? It's not the first hard thing, the time we've ever gone through. And if you look scripturally, it's not the last and it's not the first, right? So, so what, is, what is Jesus trying to tell us as we hear Matthew speaking to this community, right? The other thing I want to remind you of is that the Gospel of Matthew is, is, um, is always talking about uh, Jesus having this prophetic, right, uh, 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 um, life to him where he's going to uh, uh, be the part that says the prophet, prophecies that are from the past are going to come true. The Gospel of Matthew follows, in a lot of ways, the story of the Exodus. Think about it, right? So the story of the Exodus with, with um, the, the firstborn, you know, the, the, the people slaughtered with the blood of the lamb. You could put, put, at the Passover, I had to put the blood of the lamb on your, your, your house, and people were slaughtered, and, and, and you had uh, people having to go through the Red Sea, you had people, right, this whole salvation history, and you start with the life of Jesus, which isn't that different. He has to flee to Egypt. He goes through the waters of baptism, right? He goes into the wilderness of temptation. Um, and now he's on, on the mountain, which reminds us of Mount Sinai and the Torah, right? So he's following a lot of that same line of the story in Exodus. And so, here we have Jesus um, having called his disciples, which we talked about in the last two weeks, right? Jesus going around calling his disciples, gathering them. Now we have, for the next few weeks, really hard teachings about what it means to follow Jesus. And we'll hear about, yeah, turning the other cheek, giving that one coat to someone who, you know, if you have two coats, give it away. Turning the other cheek, you know, uh, all of the... the uh, forgive your enemies, love your enemies, right? We have all those things coming up, so buckle up. Fasten those seatbelts, because it will get turbulent when we pay attention to what Jesus is calling us to do. But the point of these early, these 12 uh, uh, Beatitudes, which aren't about how to be happy, they about, they're about how do you live through this time with God with you? Right? And also they're about hope. And, and, and they're about the knowledge that, that uh, we find favor with God who finds favor in us. Not because we do anything. These aren't commandments. They're statements. Right? None of them say you have to be meek. Right? None of them say you have to be merciful. Right? They just, they're statements about being part of, of this the disciples of Jesus, about, about life as disciples of Jesus um, and the hope that comes with it. These also were, uh, remember the early uh, community in Matthew had been waiting for Jesus to come back, <laughs> right? What about that Jesus who said he was going to come back right away? We're still waiting, right? We're still waiting. 
And so, and so he's speaking words of hope to them. Blessed are you who are persecuted. Blessed are you who mourn. You know, when you're, when you're, you'll, you'll receive comfort. You have my comfort. You'll be comforted in this, right? Blessed are those who are merciful. I require you to do justice and to love kindness. Has said loving kindness. Has said, yeah. I, I, and to walk humbly, to walk with meekness and gentleness. Because that's what a life centered in God is like. We live that way. Right? And so we go back to Micah. Put those words on your fridge. And, and be reminded of both how, right? I mean, we could have not had a sermon at all and just ended with the words of Micah. I mean, what else do we need to know? Except that it's hard. Right? It's hard to desire justice, um, especially when our lives are comfortable, right? Or we don't want to get that involved, or that just seems like a lot of work, or we don't want to stand up to that truth that way because it's just too hard, or we might be persecuted for it in the world. You know, these are upside down things that Jesus is saying. Blessed are you who mourn? There's nothing in our world that says, Blessed are you who mourn. Watch the commercials for the Super Bowl now for the next three weeks. Is there anything in that? Blessed are you when you buy the new Infinity. Blessed are you when you eat Doritos. Blessed are you with Miller Lite or whatever it is, right? There's nothing about blessed are you who, who are struggling with injustice in the world. Blessed are you when you're persecuted for standing up for what's right. Blessed are you. Blessed are you, right? And when we come to the Eucharist today, we will be reminded of that strength that's given us, of God having found favor in us, right? Having found, turned the world upside down by the cross, right? Transformed us by the cross and inviting us to live a transformed life that transformed the world. And there's no other way than for us to do those things for the work of God in transforming the lives of others, thus transforming the world, right? Like Mother Teresa is saying, it's not doing great things, it's doing small things of great love, right? Not any one of us in the room yet has been called to go open an orphanage somewhere, right? Not yet. Could be. Never know. Wait for that Holy Spirit, okay? So, buckle up. Right? Discipleship is not easy, but it is worth it, right? It is, it is a blessed way to live because we live in the foolishness of the cross to a world that finds it foolish, but it's not at all foolish to God. It's God's power. And um, there's this little quote from one of the commentaries that I found. The power of God is revealed wherever the love of God becomes flesh. The power of God is revealed wherever the love of God becomes flesh. One more time. The power of God is revealed wherever the love of God becomes flesh. So when we incarnate that, the power of God is at hand. Think about it. Incarnate that love this week. Amen. Let's stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 5. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found in your bulletin beginning on page 5. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For our, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. We pray for our president. Are you all not following with the prayers of the people? and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Kevin, our bishop, and Marianne, our pastor, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and his church. For our armed forces throughout the world, police officers, firefighters, and for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially those on our parish prayer list. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion and forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Peace of the Lord. Peace. Please be seated. Are there birthdays or anniversaries today? There are. Yes. Oh, that's right. You didn't come last I week. I should have come up last week and I only needed two When's yours? January 31st is the same as your father. Yes. Yes. Same as my father. And yours is? January 26th. All right. Okay. Yes. All right. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. 
And in their heart, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yes. Happy yes. Birthday. What's your favorite? What, what kind of is your favorite cake? Lemon. Lemon. Chocolate. Okay, everybody, hear, hear it out. <laughs> with 80, Chocolate with and, and coconut. I love coconut. With huh? 80 candles. With 80 <laughs> candles. <laughs> yeah. 85. Yeah. Yes, okay. Congratulations, <laughs> right? Every day is a gift. Anniversaries? All right. Now, is there a service across the road today? Yes, so there's a memorial service, a uh, life memorial service uh, uh, at the funeral home over here, which the good news is everybody's going to drive by and think we're packed. <laughs> so maybe we should ask him to have one every Sunday, because everybody's going to be like, oh my gosh, that's a booming church. Yeah. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, come into his courts with praise.
Baker, Stick Prayer A, The Great Thanksgiving, found on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 8 in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night, he was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let's be the peace. For the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
is another insert, give thanks. We're going to sing the top part twice and the bottom part twice. Just follow me. communion prayer found on page 15 of your bulletin page 365 in the book of common prayer let us pray eternal god heavenly father you have graciously accepted us as living members of your son our savior jesus christ and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God who passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remain with you this day and always. Amen. Our final hymn is number 662.
Lord and Sacrament, and in the Fellowship of Praise and uh, Fellowship of Love. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Have a great week. This is my last one in my 50s. <laughs> Have a great week. God bless you. See you next week at 9.30, same time, same place. And don't forget, here at Seaford, and don't forget to come here about how you can save money on your electric and heating and, and save the environment while you're doing it too. Go in peace. <laughs>